What does it actually mean to watch TV? The answer used to be simple. Back in the 1960s, you would hop off your couch, walk over to a big rounded television set equipped with bunny ears, turn on a switch, and then wait a few minutes for it to warm up. In addition to radio, newspapers, and magazines, this was one of the few ways to consume media. Now with streamers available on every phone, tablet, computer, and yes, still TV screens, TV and media in general can be consumed everywhere. Throughout the second half of the 20th century, we saw the rise of cable television, followed in the past 20 years by its decline. During that time, the internet gave rise to a new wave of digital media. Through internet information companies which offer content, through lifestyle and niche websites, and of course, through newest ways to watch TV, streaming. Recently, I was a mergers and acquisitions advisor for the J2 Global Acquisition of De Leon. And while you may not be familiar with J2, you'll no doubt have heard of its portfolio of brands, which include IGN, Mashable, PicMag, and Retail Me Not, just to name a few. In fact, De Leon was one of two acquisitions J2 made just last quarter. This is not a solitary example. There is more digital media content than ever before, and at the same time, we've seen a surge of mergers and acquisitions and consolidations across the digital media landscape. But in order to know where we're going, we need to know where we came from. So let's take a step back and look at the history of digital media and how it evolved into what we know it as today. If you want to get technical about it, literally, the history of digital media dates back to the invention of the binary code, which was developed by Gottfried Wilhelm Lisbon in 1679. Don't worry, we're skipping very far ahead, because though the digital revolution had many milestones between good old 1670s and today, digital media as a form of news, art, and content doesn't start in earnest until the late 1980s and early 1990s, with the proliferation of personal computers and of course the internet. Anyone who lived through the 1990s knows that the tech boom wasn't all it was cracked up to be, at least not in the way everyone assumed. Magazines and newspapers still had strong circulation numbers and everyone was still watching cable TV. Computers and internet speeds were not fast enough to provide the kind of content you could get on TV. And newspapers and magazines were such a mainstay in culture that nobody even considered they could be replaced. But remarkable innovations on September 5th 1995 would usher in a new wave of streaming media. On that day, ESPN Sports Zone streamed a radio broadcast of the New York Yankees and Seattle Mariners baseball game. It's almost crazy to think of an audio stream as remarkable, but it was a revolution in broadcasting, setting the stage for the decade that followed. After 10 years as a mail order DVD rental, Netflix began to offer a streaming service in 2007, with about 1,000 titles out of the 70,000 it offered on DVD. The next year, Hulu emerged with a purely digital service. With faster internet speeds and more content available online, traditional media started to fall by the wayside. The number of households paying for cable or satellite peaked in 2010 at 105 million. In 2020, that number hit 82.9 million, projected to reach 72.7 million by 2023. Newspaper circulation waned to record lows with revenue dropping from 37.8 billion in 2008 to 14.3 billion in 2018, as more people got their news from online sources. Magazines, on the other hand, kept their revenue stagnant as they were quicker to embrace online relationship, even as physical circulation dropped dramatically. It's safe to say the digital revolution is here to stay. And with more and more content, streamers, online publications, and media outlets, digital media has evolved into one of the biggest industries in the world. Why would I pay for cable when I can get everything I need on Netflix? This was a common refrain spoken by holier-than-thou cord cutters in the beginning and middle of the 2010s. But as major players in the entertainment industry noticed the rise of Netflix and Hulu's popularity, they were eager to get back their content and release it on their own service. Shows like Breaking Bad, which originally aired on AMC, found a wide audience on Netflix and increased the show's popularity. However, instead of increasing AMC's viewership, people thought of it as a Netflix show, and it only drew more subscribers to the platform. There are currently over 200 streaming platforms, and 74% of American households subscribe to at least one. These include streamers that most people are aware of, like HBO Max, Peacock, and Disney Plus, but extend all the way to smaller offerings, such as Shudder, which caters to horror movie film buffs, and Roku, originally a digital media hardware company that now offers original programming. 
Digital platforms of all kinds, including news, lifestyle websites, and everything in between, are seeing a surge of activity as evidenced by a giant increase in advertising revenue. Global digital advertising is expected to reach $389 billion in 2021, up from $332 billion in 2019. Digital media is currently the most active sector in the world when it comes to mergers and acquisitions. And what was already a competitive streaming market is setting up for an even more intense marketplace as companies purchase more and more content and merge with other companies to put under their streaming service. Disney's 2019 acquisition of 20th Century Fox sent the entertainment industry into a whirlwind as it was the first time since the 1980s that a major movie studio no longer existed independently. The $71 billion purchase was only a sign of things to come. In May of this year, Amazon announced the purchase of MGM in a deal that valued at $8.45 billion. The deal was meant to add to Amazon's prime streaming service content and was yet another streamer gearing up for battle. But the newest change to the streaming world was just announced last month with a planned merger of Warner Media and Discovery. Warner Media will be spun off from parent company AT&T who will receive $43 billion from the deal. With Warner Media's streaming service, HBO Max, the additional content from Discovery adds yet another weapon in the streaming wars. The sports world hasn't been immune to this trend either. In 2019, the Zone Group, which owns the biggest sports streaming network in the world, spun off its Perform division to gain capital so it can continue to build up its content and war chest. But streamers aren't the only ones in the midst of a termulous M&A market. Similar to J2 Global's acquisition of online publication Daily Ohm, which he spoke about earlier, Recurrent Ventures, which has 15 digital media brands, including Popular Science, Outdoor Life, and Mel, last month acquired Futurism, an online science publication. Though we're seeing some of the biggest mergers to date in the digital space, with billions of dollars being spent on purchasing and creating content, Lower production cost content is also gaining popularity on social media platforms by influencers who are seen as the new content creators, attracting both viewers and ad dollars. ByteDance's TikTok has a business model based entirely on virality, with short form, easy to make content pulling in viewers with intricate algorithms. Experts expect a surge in platforms based on this model, as Gen Zers spend a more equal time engage in social media as they do traditional media, like TV and films. In addition, experts predict a further fractioning of content as more content providers enter the streaming space. It's yet to be seen how consumers will respond as they are forced to pay more subscription fees to see all the content that they're looking for. In recent years, cable TV providers with a long time stranglehold on exorbitant packages started selling channels a la carte so you only had to pay for what you watched. Could a similar situation be looming with the streamers? The future is so uncertain because the present digital media environment is changing every day. And for those in the mergers and acquisitions market, that means the most exciting time you could hope for. To learn more about other industries, as well as gain a deeper understanding of their M&A markets, like, comment, and click subscribe down below. And make sure to follow us on Instagram. It's a brave new world in digital media and across many different M&A markets. We're here to tell you how we got to this point and give you tips on where we're going. See you next time, and as always, stay golden, champs.